Hey guys, it's Jang from UltimateRC.com and I'm about to do some real quick maintenance on my Slash 4x4 and I'm going to be changing out the oil on all four shocks. So I wanted to capture that for you and let you see how uh, easy it is to uh, change the oil on the shocks, whether you have Traxxas Big Bore shocks or you have their regular Ultra shocks. They are constructed exactly the same way and the filling procedure is the same for both. So come on over and have a look up close. Okay, so the very first place that I've taken you is to a small little trash can. And you can see that it has a full set of slash 4x4 wheels and tires in there because, as I've said in my review video, those are garbage. Now they are where they belong. This is not garbage. This is a Traxxas Big Bore shock. And of course, the very first step to changing your oil on any shock is to remove the oil that's already in there. I'm just going to unscrew the cap. Of course, notice that I have the shock off of the vehicle. If you want to be a show off, you can actually do this entire process without removing the shock, but don't be a show off. Just take it off of the vehicle, top and bottom. It just makes it a lot easier. All I did was unscrew the cap, and then I just got a little piece of uh, paper towel here I'm just going to use to absorb the oil, just pouring it right out. And you can see this has been used for a while, so it's kind of brown and uh, muddied up a little bit. That's mostly from dust getting past the seals and getting it dirty. So I'm just leaving this upside down for uh, a little bit just to let it all drain out. The thicker the oil is, the longer it'll take for it to drain out. You may also want to slowly compress the shock just to push some of that oil down there. Just hold it, wait for a couple more drops to come out or whatnot. You don't have to get every single bit of the oil out, but the more that you get out, um, the closer you will be to the correct weight or a consistent weight when you put fresh oil in it. All right, now that I've got the old oil out, I'm gonna start adding some of my new oil in. The key thing here is not to fill it up immediately. Fill it up about one quarter to one third of the way. And I'll show you why in just a second. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get the camera to focus down in there, but you can see that the level of the oil isn't too high. And one of the things that folks filling up shocks always try to avoid is air inside of the shock. One of the places that air will collect where you don't want it is beneath the shock piston. You can actually see the top of the shock piston down in there. Um, you can see one of the C-clips that goes around it. You can see the top of the shaft. And what I'm going to do right now is just holding the shock in an upright position, just very slightly compress it and extend it. You know, twist the shock a little bit, just the shaft, just turn it, compress, extend, compress, extend. What I'm doing here is convincing some of the air that may be trapped underneath that piston to come out. Where does it come out? It comes out through the holes in the piston. So that's the reason why I'm turning it around. The air can actually get stuck in different positions underneath the piston. And by just moving this up and down and rotating the shock shaft a little bit, air bubbles will start to appear. Very hard to see. I see just one down in there right now. It's about to pop. But that's a pretty important step, especially if you've done a good job of removing all the oil that was in there before. And you just want to do that a little bit. And the reason that I didn't fill this all the way up to the top right from the start was the farther you fill it up with oil, the farther those air bubbles have to travel. And believe me, especially when you're using thicker shock oil, it can take forever and ever and ever for those bubbles to travel up, especially the really small ones. It just takes forever. When you get into that situation, if you're using a thick shock oil, like I said, I'm using thin right now, so it, the bubbles move pretty quickly. But if you're using thick shock oil, it really helps to not have a spring on here and just set the shock aside once you've put some air in and once you've put some oil in there, set it aside standing straight up, move on to your next shock. Just leave it there and that gives time for those air bubbles to work their way up to the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue filling it up with oil and I'm going to get it almost to the top. 
not to the very top. Again, this is always tough to capture on camera, but the surface of the oil is not flat. And if you were to look at it from the side, it's just a shape like this. It's concave. Uh, that's the technical term for that is meniscus. Don't ask. But basically what I've done here is I've, I've filled the oil up to so that the edges of that meniscus, the high points of that curve, are probably about a millimeter below the very top of shock. Um, the center portion of it, the reason I talk about the edge is since it's curved, the center portion is much lower than that. But you want to look at the edge to be your consistent judge of how much oil is in there. And the reason that I left a little bit of space in there, Troxxas shocks have a bladder in them. This is a fairly common design and it's actually sticking up a little bit so this is something to take note of. That little rubber guy in the cap, which is called a bladder, it just holds air behind it. When you put this cap back on, you need to have some space for that bladder um, to fit. The bladder, when the shock is fully extended, the bladder should be um, fully filled up and nice and round and flush like that. It's only when the shock gets compressed and the space that the shock shaft takes up causes the oil level to rise, that's when that bladder, which is just backed with air, will compress a little bit so that your shock can compress all the way. So I've left a little bit of room in there, but I've actually not left enough room. The reason that I did that is that I want to actually expel some oil as I put the cap back on. I want to push some oil out. And while that's happening, it's going to be pushing air out from around the edge of the cap. So what I'm gonna do now is just very gently start to put the cap on and just barely screwed it on at all. Then I'm gonna compress the shock about halfway. Everybody has a slightly different method for this. This is the method that I've been using for quite some years now and it seems to work pretty well with these particular shocks. Different shocks also have different um, methods that you might wanna use. So I'm gonna compress it by hand, not holding onto the, the, the cap, about halfway, and this can be easier without the spring. I like to have the spring on there just to give me some pushback. Compressing it about halfway, that now makes the oil level rise up more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slowly tighten the cap all the way down. While this is happening, I'm hearing little bubbles around the side as a little bit of air, excuse me, a little bit of oil has escaped around the sides. And the more that I tighten it down, the little bit of air that's trapped, not behind the bladder, but underneath where I don't want it, is being pushed out. So hopefully, now I'm gonna tighten it down, hand tight, you don't want it too tight, because you can actually strip that rubber bladder. I'm just gonna tighten it down all the way, and you'll notice around the edge, see my fingers are all oily, a lot of oil has come out, which is a good thing because, like I said, I put too much in to begin with. And this is this is common, and this is fine. This is actually what should happen. You should always have a little bit of oil coming out the top as you screw down on the cap. Just clean that off real good, and that's it. The trick is filling it up with a little bit more oil than it needs. Have the bladder in the cap. Put it on very slightly compress the shock part way. I usually do it about halfway. Then go ahead, holding the shock straight up, go ahead and tighten it down. Some oil will come out and some air will come out. That should get you a pretty good seal and not have too much of an air pocket at the top, except where it belongs behind the bladder. And then wipe it off. Just takes a little bit of practice. Don't be afraid to get it a little bit messy, have paper towels ready, and that's it. And go have some fun. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.